ಶರಮಣೀಯ ದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾಧನಾಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರ್ನರೋತಮೈರ್ಮುದಾ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಘನಶ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ನೀಜೈ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಆಲ್ ಮೈಟಿ ಅವರ್ ಬಿಲ್ ಔಟ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾಸ್ಮಿಕ ಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಪೂಜೆ ಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಟುಡೇ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸಭಾ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಟೆನ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೋರ್ಸಸ್ ಡನ್ ಬೈ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ನಿಸ್ಕಾಮ್ ವಲ್ಲಭ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆನ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀನ್ ನವೆಂಬರ್ ಟು ತೌಸಂಡ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಆನ್ ತರ್ಡ್ ಡೇ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಹೆ ನ್ಯಾರೇಟೆಡ್ ದ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ತರಂಗ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ತರಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪೂರ್ ಆಫ್ ನೈನ್ ಆಫ್ ಸದ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಹರಿಚರಿತ ಸಾಗರ್ In that narration, Pooja Swami described like how Abel Khachar and Jeeva Khachar both came with an elephant for welcoming Sri Ji Maharaj and the Santo. As Maharaj was one and there were two elephants, so Maharaj selected one of them. But before that, both of them, they requested to Maharaj, Maharaj, whether you select any one of anyone's elephant, we do not uh, disturb in our minds. we understand that your wishes so we are happy so please select according to your wishes don't see our heart or our mind in that way they both requested maharaj and maharaj selected jiva khachar's elephant on the other hand jiva khachar himself he requested ever khachar for remaining in maharaj's service on his elephant so in this way jiva khachar also so his uh, friendly attitude with able khachar as well as we can say in satsang like his uh, understanding of the mahima of able khachar then when the party arrived in dada uh, in darbar there able khachar had built a special or we can say a private residence for maharaj and mara stay there on the other hand all the santos leading by muktan and swami all those santos they uh for them jiva khachar her created a nice residential hall so they all sent it to jiva khachar's darbar and all saints they lived there so that was the description in the scriptures but after that there is no any particular description regarding this matter meaning what happened there or what maharaj himself did there nothing but instead of narrating those portion adharanan swami he narrated different things like uh why maharaj required to have a private resident or a secret resident because maharaj himself like to stay alone in a jungle or we can say in a forest meaning where there were no one no any human being and only that place maharaj wanted to stay why because uh because of maharaj's nature maharaj's nature was such that in many uh, in many places in the vachanamrut he himself narrated his own nature like i always uh like to stay in a forest not in a public not only that but i do not want to keep anything with me i do not want to eat anything what is whatever you call it some tears in this way sri jimara narrated his own preferences or we can say his own nature but why maharaj require he and in the public for a private place or private room or we can say private resident the reason for that sadguru adarnan swami taught in the scriptures because maharaj the whole day he desired to meditate upon his own original form that was the only reason why he wanted to stay alone because from the beginning his nature was such to remain engrossed in the form of bhagwan 
that was his innermost nature and we know as we have many many different kinds of natures like one has a nature to remain very silent not to speak too much some has a nature to speak too much some has a nature to eat sweets only on the other hand the others they have a nature to eat spicy foods in this way we all have different different natures and in normal condition we cannot able to remove our basic nature it is said in gujarati like pran ane prakruti sathe jaye meaning one cannot change one's prakruti or one's nature in normal condition but here in the case of sri ji maharaj as not only he had himself narrated his nature in the vachanamrut but when we go deep in his own life meaning whenever we studied his one vicharan leela then we can find out like maharaj's nature was really that uh, that kind of nature he had because during his one vicharan maharaj performed very very hard penance or we can say tap and because of that even his body become very frail uh very very weak and even some some of the scriptures are deeply narrated his one vichran leela and in those scriptures even we cannot read them even we cannot narrate those scriptures why because that was the true story of sri ji maharaj himself and because because at that time we can say maharaj's condition was worse than a beggar on this earth because he was uh, like wandering one house to another in this way he wandering one place to another for begging food and sometimes some people gave him food and others may deny to give him anything and even insult him so in this way we can say like his condition was worse than a beggar on this earth during the one which run maharaj had been pushed around he had done 6 days fast while coming back from the southern part of india towards the middle part of india during this one which run uh, sri ji maharaj had nothing to eat during his walking to in, in inside the forest and because of that he had to remain without water and without food for 6 days and finally we know about this incident like shivji and parvati came on in in their different form and they gave, provided them with food so in this way he had to perform many days of fast and also during his one week run he didn't have any like fine clothes or something he had kept only one uh, small piece of cloth to cover his body nothing else so in this way why he had performed this much austerity for because he wanted to give us its fruits now today we are happy today we are eating very delicious food even today we are, we have a big houses to live in we have a car to transport ourselves to one place to another in this way we have all kind of luxuries but when we think for bhagwan when he was in the in human form on this earth then he had nothing not it is not like bhagwan's uh, fortune or something like that he is bhagwan so if he desired to enjoy all these things then even he had the highest level of all these opulences and luxuries but why he lived in such a way because he wanted to give us happiness whatever our bad part in our life all those bad part he had accepted himself and he give his happiness to us and because of that he had performed this very very tough penance or he even lived for such a condition so we all wanted to remove basing insects 
like uh, we have bad nature or bad habits whatever we have inside our heart we want to remove those things but the very easiest way to remove all those things is to remember again and again or this Maharaj Daya because he had changed his own nature for giving us benefit giving us happiness then if we think this Maharaj's nature like he had uh, nature to not keeping anything not to eat any delicious food he had a nature not to stay in a public he had a nature not to stay in a house in this way he had changed all of his natures even we cannot change our nature if we have a nature to eat sweet or if we have a nature to uh, eat only spicy food we cannot change that nature but Bhagwan himself had changed his nature why because he wanted to give us happiness only because of our when even Bhagwan Swaminarayan came into Gujarat and after meeting Raman and Swami when Raman and Swami handed over the leadership of this fellowship then because of Raman and Swami's Agnya he began to accept like nice clothes uh, very delicious foods and everything whatever the devotees and saints offer them why he had accepted all those things because if he accept our devotion or like whatever we offer to him like things anything to eat or like clothes or whatever ornaments or whatever then the devotees and saints become happy and because of our happiness he had changed his nature so now it is our part it is our turn to change our nature to give him happiness if we want to please him then we have to change our bad nature and Bhagwan never said to change everything Bhagwan only said to live according to the scriptures according to his commands and what our nature which transgress Bhagwan's command we have to change all of those bad natures and if we change our natures Bhagwan will be pleased upon us then uh, in the main scriptures in the Haricharitanu Sagar it is said that Jiv is all powerful but less than God but because it united with the body consciousness meaning I-ness and minus, it forget its power like I have this this much power the Jiv forget and because of that he remained like very lazy or we can say he understood I cannot do anything so in this way that was uh, that that was the fault of the Jiv because it, it united with the body whichever body this Jeev goes in the Jeev thinks it to be uh, like pleasant but when the Jeev finds true Sadhu Sadhu then talks about liberation to, the, to that Jeev Sadhu says that you are not the body this sansar meaning this whole world and its activities that you think to be true is not true it's like a dream by talking to the Jeev this way the Sadhu attaches that Jeev into God and for uh, explanation of this uh, principle of the scriptures Puja Swami had narrated one example of the King Janak King Janak in ancient India he was the very great king and at that time even though he was a king of the great kingdom but he had not attached with any of his even his authority his luxuries his wealth and property nothing he didn't attach with anything why because one incident happened to him once the king Janak he was sleeping at night at the time dream came and in a dream king Janak he was feeling like uh, 
even though i will uh, i am a king of this state i uh, i i'm a king of this kingdom and everything like peace and everything all of the people happily living in the state but once upon a day there was the neighboring state the attack on the state and because of that the king janak launched the war and because of that he was uh, like sent it out of the state in the forest without any weapon without any nice clothes he was given very simple clothes not only to him but also to all of his, the royal family and take out all the ornaments and all rich clothes and everything and they were sent it out of the state in the forest there the king janak he was feeling in a dream like i was walking uh, with my family in in inside the forest for many days and he had nothing to eat not even drink uh, not he found any where water to drink so after 6 7 days he found a small like village and there he begged some food from the people so he found only one rotlo and he came out of the village and there he sat down with his family members he distributed he was he was going to distribute the little part of this rotlo to everyone so that everyone can eat and at the same time a hawk came from the sky and immediately went back with the rotlo so nothing remained to eat with the king janak so at that time because of this sock his eyes open and there he found like i i'm king janak and i am i i am laying on this bed in my palace so this was only the dream and that was all in the morning so after this incident the king janak he asked all of his members of the court he asked all of those because they were well very, very scholar and janak asked all of the scholars like what is true that or this he didn't narrate what is that meaning what was the dream instead of narrating he simply asked what is true you have to give me answer today but no one gave any answer because no one knew about the dream and without narrating by king janak no one can knew what is the dream so everyone was discussing amongst each other what is this and what is that no one can understand and at that time astavakra rusi he was coming inside the palace he was like handicap um uh, he was handicapped by uh, he he was handicapped at eight places on his body and because of that he cannot even properly walk so by watching this all the courtiers all those scholars they were laughing on the other hand the astavak rusi he was also laughing then the king asked to the rusi why are you laughing i can understand like all these scholars they are laughing because of your walking style but why you are laughing then the rishi he say to the king like i understood you have kept many many scholars but now today i found this is all nothing but the chamars meaning one who work with the leather meaning one who work with the dead animal to found or recover the leather then the whole assembly they become silent then how is it possible then the king asked him why the rusi explained like they only have a reason to watch on my body not my soul and that is why they are nothing but the chamars those who have only vision towards one's body one's leather cover this body so in this way they have only such kind of vision they are not a scholar 
and that's why they cannot give you this uh, they cannot give the precise answer of your question then the king janak he worship that rusi and he has the same question to him what is true that or this but this ashtavak rusi he was he had attained very high position in spirituality and because of that he had attained a power of omniscient and because of that power he knew about the king janak's dream and that's why he simply asked two questions to the king when you are watching that at the time this is uh, there or not the king said no this is not there then again the second question asked by the rusi to the king janak now today now at present time you are watching that the king said no because i am in present i am in this mode not that mode so then rusi said both things not true both are false not any one of true why because that dream began when you close your eyes and finished when you open your eyes and this dream began when you open your eyes and finished when you close permanently your eyes so both of the things are same nothing is true this is a big dream that was the small dream that dream only for one night and this dream for many years but nothing different so in this way the king janak attained the brahma gnana meaning the knowledge of one's atma the rishi narrated like only your soul is for permanent and that is only true thing in this body in this world so in this way when king janak attained the true knowledge regarding one's own self regarding the perishable nature of this world then from that day even though while staying in the king position he never had attachment with the any of his opulences any of his wealth or properties or luxuries nothing he simply living in a palace without any kind of attachment and the same thing narrated in the scriptures like we have to do this while staying in this world while living in this family while living in even household life we have to cultivate these attributes which king janak had and if we have that attitude of king janak then whenever any miseries or problems come to our daily life our social life anything happen to us or any profit too much profit we have attained or any like great solve uh, losses we have then we remain stable and tremble in our life and for that we have to acquire this knowledge then sri ji maharaj narrated like adaran swami says maharaj never like one who had ego in himself so ego is the very greatest uh problem or obstacle attaining bhagwan or remain peacefully in the satsang if one has ego because of ego many people many devotees even saints they were not staying in satsang they had to give up this satsang because of their nature of ego and maharaj always liked sadhu who was egoless and even maharaj understood one who is more egoless a sadhu or devotee he is more dear to him and because of that we have to try to remove ego from our heart whenever someone says a uh, words that hurt a person the reason it hurts is because that person puts weight on those words and also that he has an ego that he is something but if that person is smart then he should think that i am atma and he is saying false about my body so whenever some say some like uh, errors thing for us 
or some ill words for us then at the time we should think we have like many ways to think for this if we think like he had why he had told me this hard word then we become disturbed but instead of that if we think like even though he had said but i am atma he had said to my body he had said to my body's nature not to me i am different from this body so if we think in this way then we have no any kind of problem with any person whether one speak good for us or whether one speaks ill of us but after sri ji maharaj narrated uh, adaran some narrated maharaj instruction like all the rules and regulations that maharaj has made for us it's in our benefit if we stay in those uh, restrictions then we will get benefit from that and for for our more understanding puja swami narrated the example of vyapkanand swami vyapkanand swami was the very first saint initiated by bhagwan swami himself he was the first saint and he he had like attained a power of going samadhi merely by sri ji maharaj uh, blessings and swami was very great and because of his blessings even a uh, one vanik who was in the position of divan in one's muslim state and he was saved by maharaj by paying 100000 rupees on behalf of him so that was vyapkanan swami many many such kind of, such kind of incident happened to him because of maharaj and that vyapkanan swami once sri ji maharaj instructed to the saints and devotees like their rules and regulations and according to uh, according to their rules and regulations sri ji maharaj narrated one of rules for saints not to even look towards the female statue or paintings then vyapkanand swami had a doubt in his mind like it is okay it is uh, everyone can understand not to touch or not to came in contact with any female but why sri ji maharaj say to not even look towards any painting or statue what happened because those things are uh, they have no life statue is statue without having any life and paintings are the same thing they even cannot move from that place then what happened to us then after many days passed to this incident and vyapkan and swami according to sri ji maharaj instruction he was narrated uh, he was narrating his like a satsang uh, perspective to the people and because of that he was wandering one place to another for which run once vyapkanand swami arrived in sonagarh that was the place near surendranagar so there there was a very ancient temple of vasuki nag and that temple was built uh, with uh, before many many years ago and that was that uh, that was the ancient temple and in the temple we know whenever a uh, stone temple there were carving works and in a carving there were, uh, that was the design in ancient time to make a different kind of uh, like idols inside the temple not the ta- uh, only idol of god but in on a wall on a dome at very places like different kind of statues and according to that custom that tradition in that mandir there was like many small um stone uh, car uh, statues of female they were dancing and at the time vyapkanand swami was staying at in that mandir for a couple of hours not more than that but uh, when swami was laying on a floor at the time he was looking upward meaning on a ceiling and on a ceiling on a dome there was like some statues stone statues of female they were dancing so 
that th- those statues when vapkan and swami was looking for a while then again he looked towards those statues then automatically those statues they were not remain statue but actually they were dancing so uh, immediately vapkan and swami got up and came out of the temple he realized sridhi maharaj's words like maharaj himself said not to look towards even the statues so in this way vyapkanand swami realized sridhi maharaj's greatness and his instruction the importance of his instructions and immediately he live for garuda and when he came to garuda and met maharaj he asked for forgiveness he asked for forgiveness from from maharaj and he said maharaj please forgive me because i have a doubt in your instruction but today this incident happened to me so in this way this incident of vyapkan and swami give us the message not to create doubt for any of his instruction given by bhagwan himself or given by his ekantik satpurush to us if we follow blindly that instruction of the scriptures then we will get benefit no doubt we will definitely get benefit or if we cannot get benefit then at least we can save ourselves from uh from meeting any kind of danger or any kind of losses so for that purpose we have to follow rules and regulations given by bhagwan and his saints but if we don't follow them then we will be pulled out by by kusang and drop drop from the satsang in this way uh, adarnanand swami narrated these instructions given by sri ji maharaj to all of his saints and devotees and puja swami also narrated on this same things for not engaging our own self in a kusang by transgressing maharaj rules and regulations and if we want to stay in satsang then we have to follow maharaj each and every instructions again at last we should uh remind the points first point during this katha which swami narrated that was the uh understanding of apple culture and jiva culture and then why maharaj need a secret or private resident and why he stay in alone meaning secluded place because of his nature to stay outside of the public area and mostly he like to stay in a forest where there was river or where there is a trees and everything and not too much people around so that he can meditate upon his own form for a long period of time that was sri ji maharaj's nature and because of that he wanted to stay alone and that was the first point the second point um even though maharaj has that much nature to stay only in a forest to perform austerities and not to come in public places not to come in a village or cities even though he had that much nature but only to give us liberation only to provide us the facility by which we can understand the true glory of bhagwan and we can follow his instructions and by following his instructions we can attain the divine abode of akshardham after our death only for that purpose he changed his nature totally changed his nature and he began to accept whatever we offered to him nice clothes ornaments nice food nice uh, and big houses to live in everything whatever we offer to him he began to accept it, our devotion because if we as uh, offer anything to him and he accept our devotion then we have created love for him and because of our affection for him we definitely uh became detached from this uh worldly matters and because of that our focus 
become very solid on the form of Bhagwan, and because of that we will be sent to Akshardham. Third point, if we uh, keep in our mind Maharaj Daya, meaning he had during his one which run he had uh, tolerated too much for us if we understand this like whatever we have happiness today that all because of maharaj parents not our any effort and if we think in this way then without any more difficulties or without any more practice we can easily remove our bad habits and change into good habits to please Bhagwan. Fourth point is everyone's jeev is more powerful than the others, but it united with the body and body consists in meaning Iness and minus and because of that it remained weak. Then Pujaswami narrated the example of the King Janak then we should also understand that knowledge regarding our own and true self then Maharaj said I do not like one who has ego in himself the next point uh, we have to follow each and every rules and regulations given by Maharaj and his Santo why because to narrate to explain this point, Puja Swami had given us an example of Vyapkanan Swami. In this way, Puja Swami had narrated the 61 chapter of 9th Pur of Haricharitaram Sagar. In this way, by saying, My humble Jai Swami Narayan. Sri Ganeshyam Maharaj Nijay Sri Patim Sri Dharam Sarvadeveshwaram Bhakti Dharmatmajam Vasudevam Harim Madhavam Keshavam Kamadam Karanam Swaminarayanam Nilakantham Bhaje Ganeshyam Maharaj 